Besides, Sandy said she dropped it and that she was so proud of him that he didn't drink or do a few drugs. <laughs> Although, I don't think she'd be too pleased with the fact that we played strip poker and... <laughs> Thank you. September 23rd, 1996. Pricking her finger with her long black daisy, she smelled serenely like gasoline. <laughs> My first instinct was to kill it, but I held back the urge for blood. The intoxicant of death had taken over my body, leaving not an iota of fright. <laughs> Standing, poised, the daisy beckoned me to her, and I, like the fool I was, I was drawn to her. I followed the trail of black petals and found myself in a strange room full of telephones. <laughs> Old-fashioned ones, cordless ones, cellulars. It was all so overwhelming. An intense ringing in my ears made me drop to the swampy ground with pain. Was this to be my end? <laughs> like kryptonite to Clark, the telephones were slowly breaking down my molecular structure. The communication device was a killer. The black daisy denied any part in my suicide, but then she can't talk anyway. The blood of my, <laughs> makes no sense. <laughs> the blood of my deceased predecessors falls loosely to my tongue and the black daisy hungrily eats me up. <laughs> January 1st, 1997. Last night, Mom and Dad went out for the night. So, Sarah came over. And I kind of also invited Sandy over too, who wasn't exactly supposed to be there. He came at about quarter to seven, and his mom interrogated him and me, because Sandy told her that my parents were gonna be home all night. I'm not gonna bother to recount the whole conversation, but let's just say, the adrenaline was a pumping. <laughs> Then she said she'd call and talk to my parents and make sure they were there. So every time the phone rang, everyone would freak because I was supposed to pretend that I was my mother. Now there's a scary thought. She did call, but then decided not to talk to them. Thank God, because they weren't there the whole night and I knew they weren't gonna be and so did Sandy. But I think I'm pretty much in the clear though. If she was gonna call back and check out the story, she would have today. Besides, Sandy said she dropped it and that she was so proud of him that he didn't drink or do a few drugs. <laughs> Although, I don't think she'd be too pleased with the fact that we played strip poker and, <laughs> and held a private seance. <laughs> that was Sarah and Sandy's idea, not mine. That shit scares me. <laughs> But also, it was kind of stupid because they called Kurt Cobain. <laughs> As if. <laughs> now, the only hitch, it would have been perfect if my Uncle Ken hadn't come in a little after 12. Before that, Alan and Ken had come in a few times, but we'd successfully hidden Sandy. But this time, midnight had gone by and we were caught off guard. <laughs> he won't tell, I don't think. I think he thinks it's not his business. I don't think he'll say anything. Oh, fuck, I am so dead. <laughs> Thank you.